morning. Welcome to worship. It is a gift to gather together as Lutheran Church of the Resurrection this day and a blessing to be with you in this Advent season. I'm Pastor Karen Paul. I'm Pastor Kelly Neiman Anderson. It's a gift to be here. It so, is. Just a few reminders of the life and the ministry unfolding here at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. Uh, this Wednesday, you can join me for a time of peace at noon that we will release our premiere uh, Wednesday Advent time together. So we come together and we will uh, wonder on this last, believe it or not, last Wednesday. How'd this happen? I know. I mean, <laughs> the following week is Christmas. And so our last Wednesday devotional time together. So join us at noon for our premiere and then you can watch it the rest of the day whenever you get home from work or when you have time. But just to get a time of peace and rest and a midweek time of pause. So join us on Wednesday. Next Sunday, December 20th, we will have our virtual Christmas program available right here on the YouTube channel, live premiere at 9.30 a.m. as a part of worship service. We really hope you'll join us at that time, or again, you can watch it later in the day. Mm -hmm. um, but because of that, we will not have drive-in church on Sunday, December 20th. So join us right here. Our children, youth, and families have been working hard to create a virtual Christmas pageant experience for you, and I think you're going to love it. Yeah, fun stuff happening. There's even like a green screen happening. Ooh. Oh, we're figuring this all out. This is very modern for me. <laughs> so we are learning it together. We're throwing all kinds of yeah. fun stuff at Patrick Kelly. But it's great. Gotten here. It's going to be totally awesome. So join us. Join us. So we're having fun. And as we talk about yeah. the schedule happening, you should be receiving this week. Um, I don't know if you can see that online or not, but uh, a fun postcard in the mail about um, us being Christmas as LCR, whether it's going to be online or um, we are doing a drive-in. Pray for great weather on Christmas Eve. <sighs> Keep it above freezing and no snow that we can come together and have a wonderful drive-in worship service together at 3.30 um, for Christmas Eve. It'll be a time to gather together if you want to come in and have fun together that we um, can gather together as a community of faith. Um, and then the rest of our services around Christmas, like the pageant, and then after Christmas as well as we go into New Year. So that card will be coming in the mail to you. We do have extras for you to pick up here at church to be able to share with your friends and neighbors, um, to be able to just inform them how they can be part of this Christmas celebration. So if you want to just stop by, they'll be in our Breezeway area, and you can just share those with um, everyone you'd like to share the Christmas spirit with as we celebrate the Nativity of our Lord. So come by and pick those up. We look forward to this time. I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship and join us as we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Jesus, who comes as new birth, we have prepared for you with comfortable traditions and humble requests. We have remembered your birth as if it was a past act and not the bold declaration of a living God. We have rested in the safer hope of your work, struggling with our call as co-creators of the beloved community, hurting your children with our ill-informed action and comfort catering in action. All this we humbly confess together. Help us remember in this season of anticipation that we prepare not only for you, but because of you. Challenge us to examine our intentions and to hold sacred both the act of preparing and the transforming justice love of the one who comes. Amen. I invite you to join with us in our gathering song. Let me find you. 
We praise you, O oh God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles of this wreath with joy, strengthen our hearts as we await the coming of our Lord in glory. Enlighten us by your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant us this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Amen. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel today comes from Luke in the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quinius was governor in Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was a descendant from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no, no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news and great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. This is the gospel of our Lord this day. Amen. In those days... Yes, in those days, the gospel text starts today. A decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all should be registered. All the world, can you imagine? Think of the determination in that decree. 
that dictatorial influence of this announcement, which falls across the whole creation and trying to seize everything in a single grasp. For what? Well, Luke's early listeners would know right away, of course, for taxes, for tribute to the empire, for extracting value in order to build palaces and armies, in short, for strengthening the imperial power. It was about power. And those listeners would know too the implicit threat of force in such a decree, the unsaid or else, the chill in the air as the news spread far and wide. They waited in their journeys to go and be registered. And now, and now we are in the days of Advent and we wait, not for an emperor's decree, but we wait. Now, some of you know, I really don't have the spiritual gift of waiting. I usually want to get things wrapped up and done and move on. Or I'm thinking five steps ahead of people because I'm a strategic thinker, a planner, thinking about the next program, the next worship service, or the next activity that fits in with the mission and ministry of our church here at LCR. But when Advent comes along, I find myself in a time of expectant waiting. And instead of the anxiety that I normally feel in times of slowing down or of times of waiting, I find myself full of anticipation, anticipating good news of great joy. And in this great joy of Advent, I find myself wrapped up in the promise of these incredible, wonderful reminders that we've been talking about in the season of Advent, of peace and hope, and in next week about love. All of these that are given to us in our Savior, our Messiah, and Lord. It makes me think that this year, more than any other year, this time of Advent, it needs to encourage us to wait and to pause, and that we may really need to open our eyes and our ears, either in our fields, quote unquote, our backyards, our church parking lots with drive-in worship, while we share our family devotions that we um, share together here in our Advent season, at our dining room tables, on our sofas and our family rooms as we worship together in online worship, desks at work, at line at the grocery store, while helping our kids or our grandkids with their homework, to be able to see an angel of the Lord standing before us and to let the glory of the Lord shine around us, to encompass us and to not be terrified or afraid. Like our scripture says today in verse 10, and to let the angels say to us, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. Because this year has tested us for sure, as a people, a country, and individually. We have learned more about ourselves, our family, our church, our jobs, our tasks, our likes, our hobbies, our skills, our patience for sure. And we have been in a different form of waiting. As we live in this season of a pandemic, I too find myself also wearied during the waiting. I am sometimes spinning my wheels, not sure what's going to happen next and feel like I'm getting nowhere fast. And if I'm honest, I'm probably like many of you, I'm over it all. I'm ready for this pandemic to be done. Yet I know there is still some more time of waiting ahead. And to hear today, I am bringing you good news of great joy. I think where is joy? Joy. I am reminded today that joy, I am reminded that joy by the angels is here. Joy is in every single moment. 
It is in every single moment that we cultivate a practice of joy in the season of Advent and beyond. Yes, I still find joy in every day, in every time of Advent waiting. It is different for sure, but what hasn't been different for this year? The fact is that in this season, in our online worship gatherings, drive-in worship, outdoor worship, and communion together online, online Bible studies and Zoom for confirmation and youth group, drive and drop serving opportunities that we've had, our Zoom topic conversations, in the lighting of our Advent wreaths or opening our Advent calendars at our prospective homes, in the sharing of this familiar gospel story, we know that Christ will come again to us born in a manger. And as always, we will be waiting and watching for this incredible light, this child to enter our world and a world dying for a shimmer of light. Of course, we know this light brought joy to our world as our Messiah, Savior, and Lord. It's about participating in that light and joy in, an, in that work of our kingdom, the kingdom that God gave us. And today, joy is what we need to continue to share into our world and in these days ahead as we move along in our Advent season towards Christmas Eve and day and through this winter time as well. Like our devotion says this week, Maybe we need to roll up our sleeves and put some work into cultivating a practice of joy because joy may not come naturally for all of us. Cultivating a practice of joy is what we do with things that are not yet easy and natural parts of our daily lives. We practice them. We practice what's new or challenging for us like piano or soccer or sometimes patience. <laughs> We practice what we might have a knack for, but want to get better at, like drawing or soup making or karate for some people. We practice what we're good at and know we'll lose it if we don't keep at it, like yoga and math and playing guitar or technology or singing or courage. Could joy maybe fall into that category as well? Could we practice delighting in some piece of each new day, making each new person greeted with joy and wonder, treasuring in those kind of connections, whether they're distancing in person to person or on the phone or cards or however we present joy. If joy is not a spur of the moment indulgence, but a practice, it also becomes a tool that we can use to meet challenges in our lives. If we can be unafraid to respond to good news with our whole selves, like the angels showed the shepherds, we can access God's power and grace within us. And if we can be unafraid to maybe look a little silly in front of strangers and share good news, perhaps, we can free them to find their joy as well. So I asked the question this week out on Facebook and with my confirmation youth and their family and their mentors online this week, what brings you joy? Some of those wonderful responses were my job and my family, truly blessed to have them in this crazy time of this season. Christmas music and sunshine and family and friends Christmas trees and Christmas decorations, planning for family virtual Christmas party. Boy, this there was much joy in the sunshine and warmer weather in this past week. TikTok and maps and countries, school and seeing friends, a brother that unexpectedly called just to check in. And for me, it's the puppy love I get when I go home at the end of the day and sunflowers. And of course, my bright blue colors and you can't see them right now, but my fun patterned pants that I like to wear. It brings me joy. So this Advent, let's be intentional about practicing joy or looking for opportunities to share joy because it might bring some much needed light and laughter back to our days, to our very lives, our souls, our friends, our family, and our world. Our world that is in need of a shimmer of light and joy. 
That way we can be like the multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. I want you to think about or talk with your family about these two things this week. What, what, what gets in the way of you practicing joy? And also, what is one way you will share joy this week? Let us go out and cultivate an amazing practice of sharing joy, hope, peace, and love. Let us bring good news and great joy among all of God's people. Amen. Please join me in the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to, to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of your church and the world as you draw near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the people who are facing shortages or in crisis as the seasons change, especially for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. We lift in prayer Racine County Food Shelf, Living Faith Food Pantry, and Holy Communion Food Pantry that serve the people in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who, are, who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Send your healing spirit upon those we lift in prayer today. Roy, Elaine, David, Sherry, Doris, Barbara, Pastor Bill and family, Cindy, Nancy, Tom, Phyllis, Barb, Betty, Joyce, Mark, Adele, Bill, Don, Sandy, Earl and Hazel, Sandy, Jim, Kit, Mel, Jackie, Julie, and Shirley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are blessed by those commitments that have come in towards our 2021 ministry and mission budget, and we give thanks for all that God has provided. We are ever thankful for those members who have faithfully given to all that God is calling us to be part of in the community of Racine and beyond. May we be blessed with the pledges who have, we have received and those that will come in these weeks ahead, that they may be the necessary gifts to help us continue sharing the good news of Jesus and to reach out to our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those whose names we know, especially Paul Clausen, who died earlier this past week, and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for your compassion, comfort, peace, and presence in their, name of, in their time of grief and sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered together as children of God around this table, we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion together. So even though our tables are physically separated from one another, we know that through our baptism, God holds us together spiritually. So I invite you to prepare for communion with your elements at home as we prepare here at this table as well. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is now a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. Join together with all the saints on earth, we pray together the prayer which our Lord Jesus first taught us. I'll pray the contemporary Lord's Prayer today, but you're invited to join in whatever version is comfortable for you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to take this time now to share the elements at home.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in grace everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now receive God's blessing this day. May you find time for rest this season. May you create space to wait and may the Lord our God fill you with hope, peace, joy, and love. And may Christ Jesus be ever present in your heart and may the Holy Spirit illumine your way. Amen. Now join in our sending song today. peace as we share the resurrection by loving Jesus, Jesus changing, changing lives, and, and reaching, reaching out, out to serve. serve. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.